Adamar of Lapoy, Adamar, also known as Adamar, Imar, or Ayers, de Montal, died August 1, 1098, was one of the principal figures of the First Crusade and was Bishop of Poit and Ville from before 1087. He was the chosen representative of Pope Urban II for the expedition to the Holy Land. Remembered for his martial prowess, he led knights and men into battle and fought beside them, particularly at Dorylium and Antioch. Adamar is said to have carried the Holy Lands and the Crusaders' desperate breakout at Antioch on June 28, 1098, in which superior Islamic forces under the Adabek Kerbogo were routed, securing the city for the Crusaders. He later died in 1098, due to illness. Born around 1045 into the family of the Counts of Valentin I elected Bishop of Lapoy around 1080, he was an advocate of the Gregorian reform, and among his supporters were the future Pope Urban II and Raymond of St. Gilles. Count of Toulouse and the richest, most powerful nobleman in France. He was also said to have gone on pilgrimage to Jerusalem around 1086. He was the brother of William Hugh of Montail, who was also a crusader during the First Crusade. Adamar most likely met Pope Urban II, when in August 1095 Pope Urban II visited Point. At the Council of Claremont in 1095, Adamar showed great zeal for the Crusade. There is evidence that Urban II had conferred with Adamar before the council. Adamar was named Apostolic Legate and appointed to lead the crusade by Pope Urban II on November 27, 1095. In part, Adamar was selected to lead because had already undertaken a pilgrimage to Jerusalem in 1086 and 1087. Following the announcement of the crusade Adamar spent the next year raising money and recruiting men. Departing on August 15, 1096, he accompanied Raymond IV. Count of Toulouse, in his army to the east. Whilst Raymond and the other leaders often quarreled with each other over the leadership of the Crusade, Adamar was always recognized as the spiritual leader of the Crusade and was widely respected by the majority of the Crusaders. During the leg of the trip from Durazzo to Constantinople, in the valley of Pelagonia, Adamar was set upon by a group of Pekinag mercenaries, one day when he had wandered too far from the majority of the Crusader forces. The Pechenegs beat and robbed Adamar. However, one of Adamar's assailants wished to keep his belongings for himself and ended up in quarrel with the other assailants. It was at this time Adamar was saved by Crusader forces who had noticed the disturbance. Once the army had reached Thessalonica, Adamar decided to stay there for some time, due to sickness, whilst the Crusader forces moved onward. Following this delay, Adamar eventually was able to regroup with the Crusaders. Adamar negotiated with Alexius Icomnenas at Constantinople re-established some discipline among the Crusaders at Nicaea, fought a crucial role at the Battle of Dorylium and was largely responsible for sustaining morale during the Siege of Antioch through various religious rites including fasting and special observance of holy days. One such time he did this, was after an earthquake during the Siege of Antioch, he had the Crusaders fast for three days and had the priests and clergy perform Mass and prayers. Adamar during the Siege of Antioch also had ordered the Crusaders to shave and wear a cross in an attempt to stop Crusaders from attacking one another by accident. After the capture of the city in June 1098 and the subsequent siege led by Kerboga, Adamar organized a procession through the streets and had the gates locked so that the Crusaders, many of whom had begun to panic, would be unable to leave the city. He was extremely skeptical of Peter Bartholomew's discovery in Antioch of the Holy Lands, especially because he knew such a relic already existed in Constantinople, however, he was willing to let the Crusader army believe it was real if it raised their morale. Adamar was protected by a band of Crusaders led by Henry of Esch to preserve the, albeit suspect, relic. In June 1098 Adamar fell prey to sickness and in the following months his condition would continue to deteriorate. When Kerboka was defeated, Adamar organized a council in an attempt to settle the leadership disputes, but he died on August 1, 1098, probably of typhus. Following his death, Adamar was buried in Antioch within the Basilica of St. Peter. The disputes among the higher nobles went unsolved and the march to Jerusalem was delayed for months. However, the lower class soldiers continued to think of Adamar as a leader. Following his death, Adamar reportedly appeared in several visions seen by various different crusaders. One of the first visions was reported by Peter Bartholomew who stated that Adamar appeared to him stating that due to his skepticism of the Holy Lands he had spent a few days in hell and was only rescued because a candle had been burned in his memory, he had given a gift to the shrine where the Holy Lands was kept, and due to the prayers of Bohemond. at the siege of Jerusalem Peter Desiderius claimed that to have received a vision from Adamar, himself. It was in this vision, 
that Peter claimed Adam Arhate instructed him to have the Crusaders fast and lead a procession around the walls of Jerusalem. This was done and Jerusalem was taken by the Crusaders in 1099. Later on, Stephen of Valence also claimed to have had visions featuring Adamar in which Adamar spoke to Stephen of several relics. Adamar told Stepian great reverence should be given to the cross Adamar had taken with him on the crusade. He also told Stephen how the Holy Lance should be treated and told Stephen to give Stephen's ring to Count Raymond. He told Stepian through this ring Count Raymond would be able to call upon the power of Mary. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.